This is a Win 10 inch miter saw. I've been on a mission to find the best beginner woodworking tools or for those on a budget. This was recommended by one of our channel members, Mr. David Corliss. I'm gonna check it out. I did a lot of reading and research on miter saws under $200 and there's not a lot of good options out there. This is probably the better option of any that I found. And we're gonna put it through the test and find out can it stay accurate at 90 and 45, which is most common cuts that we're gonna be making in the wood shop. It also will bevel if you need it to, a single bevel. And one of the great unique features about this saw is the fact that it's a front sliding miter saw. You don't see that at this price point very much at all. What that means is you can mount it flat against the wall and slide forward. It doesn't have those rails that stick off the back like the the Walt miter saw, it's much set up like a Festool, not a Festool saw, but it does have that same space saving design. So if you're in a small shop such as me, then this will help you out. That will allow you to mount your miter station against the wall and just save that much more space. And because the dust collection comes off the top, it doesn't get interfered with on the backside either. It's a good design. Now, because it is shipped in a smaller box, when you get it, there is a tiny bit of assembly required. The front part of the throat plate and the part to where you're gonna make those miters or change the miter angle on it, you just attach that with two bolts. It's really simple to do. The handle is also just two screws to put on. And then these side tables slide in just to give you a little extra support on the sides. That's really it. There's not a whole lot to it. It'll take you about five minutes or less. Now the overall fit and finish of this saw is fairly nice. Now it's a win product and it's under $200. So keep that in mind. So most of the housing is plastic, but the base or the bottom of the miter saw is metal. Some type of aluminum looks like to me. And these side wings are also metal. You can collapse it and keep it in a compact collapsed form just by pushing the button back here on the back. Now, because this is a sub $200, at the time of this filming anyway, a sub $200 uh, machine, then you, you gotta expect that you're gonna be giving up some type of fit, finish, quality, etc. As long as this thing cuts square, we're fine. But I wanna make you, make you aware that all the knobs are plastic, like these. Uh, of course, the screw down in there is metal, but the top knob is plastic. All the adjustments uh, pretty much are plastic. You are still getting some features on this saw that are kind of surprising. So you get a depth stop here so that you can create some half laps or dados, things like that. It'll prevent that saw from going all the way through the wood. In other words, you'll be able to stop it and make those cuts. You're also getting a single bevel on this machine. So it will bevel over to about 47 degrees. So if you're needing to cut trim or anything like that, then you have that. It'll only tilt to the left. It will not tilt to the right. That's just one of those things you're going to be giving up. It does have a plastic locking knob back here. Twist that, lock it down perfectly 90. It does have a hard stop at 90 degrees as well. As far as miters go, it has up to 47 degrees both ways, and it has positive stops at 45, 31.6, 22 and a half, 15, and zero. However, at any point, you can tighten this knob right here down and twist that and lock it in anywhere. In other words, if you need to do a three degree angle, eight degree, whatever, you can lock that in and then not have to worry about the positive stops. But if you're just going to 45 and it'll self lock into the, one of those grooves to unlock, you're just pulling this handle underneath it. It does come with a single clamp that you can hold stock down with. And the fence does move left and right to give you support further out or closer in. It will not go too far in so you can't cut it. That's good. Now, but you can lock those in place whenever you get it set to where you want it. One thing that surprised me is straight out of the box, this thing was square as square can be. It was square from fence to the blade as well as the blade to the bed. So 90 degree cuts and after checking a couple of cuts, they're coming out perfectly square, which is extremely impressive on a saw that is less than 200 bucks. I'm gonna keep going to that because if you're on a budget and you're a beginner and you need a miter saw, this might seriously need some considering. One great thing about this saw is because it's a slider, you get 12 inches of cross cut capacity and it'll cut up to three and a half inches thick, cut all the way through a four before. For most beginners, you don't really need much more capacity than that. And there are gonna be times if you're cutting sheet goods, things like that, you would like to have a little more from a 12 inch saw. I've stepped down to the 10 inch Festool and really haven't missed it too many times. There have been a few times where I wish I had the 12 inch slider again, but for the most part, the 10 inch saw does more than enough for most projects. And if you're into cutting crown molding or baseboards, this saw features a seven and a half inch crown molding nested capacity as well as six and three quarter inch baseboard vertical capacity. So you got pretty good capacity for a 10 inch saw. You can also cut up to eight and a quarter inches wide at 45 degrees. So that's still a pretty good capacity for a 10 inch saw. It's perfectly square, straight 
just cutting 245, sticking them together, and then checking them with a square, both outside and inside measurements were square. I thought that was pretty impressive for this price of a saw. The cuts are nice and straight as well. There's no bowing or bending. For a stock blade, I'm impressed for 200 bucks. A few very interesting observations about this budget miter saw is that it's cutting square out of the box, just at a 90 degrees, and the 45s are very accurate. When you put the two 45s together, you're getting a 90 degree, which is exactly what you want out of a miter saw. The blade is actually really good for a stock blade. Most stock blades you get with any saw, even $3,000 saw stop, are kind of trashy. They're just not that great. This is pretty good. I think that most people would be happier though if they got something like a Diablo blade, the 10 inch, 5 8 inch Arbor's pretty standard size. I think most people would be happier with those. I prefer an 80 tooth or up on a miter saw just because you're making more cross cuts to make a finer cut. I'll put a link to my favorite one in the description if you wanna check it out. But I think overall what you're getting for this price is, is pretty good. A couple of observations using this also is it is extremely loud. You're gonna need some type of hearing protection. This 15 amp motor, Puts out a lot of noise, so just, just keep that in mind, that it is noisy. I did have the Festool dust extractor hooked up to it, but as you can see, there's still a lot of dust laying around. And with most miter saws, it suffers from poor dust collection. That's just the nature of the beast. Even the Festool, which is supposedly the better of the miter saw dust collections, it's still just mediocre. And speaking of dust collection, it does come with a dust bag if you don't have a shop vac or some type of dust extractor. Uh, so you can use this you know, in your shop with a dust bag, you'll just be emptying it more. Inside dimension of the dust port is an inch and a quarter, which fits my Festool dust hose just right. But it does come with this adapter that steps up to two and a quarter. If you have a standard shop vac, hose will fit right on there. This also features a laser, although I can't see it because I'm red green colorblind. But if you're not, then you can see the laser and that'll help guide your cuts. The markings on the miters are high contrast. You can see them extremely easy because they're white on a black background. They're also raised up from the surface, so they're imprinted. So if that paint does come off, you can still see the numbers there or just repaint them. Also, if you're in a small shop or you're just carrying this around, then it is fairly lightweight. So you can move it around easily and or take it in out of the garage, the shed, anything like that if you want to woodwork and then put it away. Two things to keep in mind if you're going to use this on your miter station is it's probably going to need to be bolted down. It is a little front heavy at this point so because of everything sliding forward, all the weight shifts to the front, the motors out here, the blades out here. So I would absolutely bolt this down to a miter station if you have a miter station to put it on. Another thing that I really don't care for on this model, and it's just one of those trade-offs that come with something like this, is the front where this thing pivots at pivot. <laughs> Where this pivots all the way across, there's a foot on the front of this uh, throat plate underneath it that has actually given it support and it has to pivot with that. So whenever you pull the trigger underneath there, it raises slightly, but it's still rubbing on the table. So you're going to need plenty of clearance in front so that it can move uh, left and right without impacting anything underneath it. Whereas something like the Festool, or the DeWalt, everything up front is clear. You don't have to worry about it uh, being there. So you know, like my Festool here sticks off the miter station. If this was in this place, there would need to be either bolted down or some way to support that underneath further up. So I would likely have to slide this back a little bit. Now, please don't mistake me. I'm not comparing a $1,500 miter saw to a $200 saw. I'm just noting that there is a foot underneath the front of it that you're gonna have to contend with if you get this saw. The throat plate on here is quite wide at about 3 eighths of an inch. Most miter saws don't have an opening that big, but all of my saws I've used this fast cap tape on and it's built specifically for this. You just place it on there, tape it on, and then cut a hole in there, or it's gonna basically create a zero clearance insert for your miter saw, and that will prevent any small parts and pieces from falling down in there, as well as tear out because of such a wide opening. One thing sliding miter saws, all sliding miter saws, doesn't matter if it's a $1,500 Festool, a $700 or $800 Makita, or a $400 DeWalt, they all suffer from a little bit of deflection when they're fully extended all the way out. This one's no different. It's just the nature of the beast. When you push it left and right, you're going to see about an eighth, maybe a little over an eighth inch of deflection if you push hard enough. I mean, that's just kind of the way it is. Most people aren't gonna be pushing left and right. You're gonna go straight down. However, because there is that play in there, there is a tendency, especially at full extension on thicker woods, 
for you to bear down a little more, you'll see a little bit deflection. What that means is your cuts won't be a 90 degree angle if there is deflection there. So just be cautious of that. If you take this cut slow enough and steady enough, it'll be just fine. Most people will never see that unless you're cutting big thick lumber and then you're actually bearing down on it. For the most part, any miter saw that you buy, doesn't matter if it's this one or all the way up to the Festool, you're gonna see a little bit of deflection no matter what you do. However, this rail forward design is better at fighting that deflection versus something like the rail behind design like the DeWalt has. I still think they've made a really good compromise here with that. I think a lot of people wildly underestimate Win as a tool company. This saw has a two year warranty and I've had Win products in the shop for a long time. I have a Win drill press that I use all the time. It's held up extremely well. Still have it, still use it. I've had a Win bandsaw before I got the big Rikon bandsaw. I had the bench top style bandsaw from Win and it was an extremely nice saw. I passed it down to a younger woodworker. So it's just a good company that's making pretty good products for the price they're asking and i think that if you're in the market for a beginner miter saw you should probably consider this win as one of your options i think the win is an excellent pick for a beginner on a budget however if you have a bigger budget i would strongly recommend my favorite miter saw even over the festool is the dewalt dws 779 i have had this saw since 2017 and it has been an absolute workhorse and it'll give you up to 60 degrees one way 50 degrees of miter the other way and it's a dough bevel and it's a 12 inch slider, so you're getting more capacity. I just think this is an excellent all around saw for the price. The best beginner table saw I've found is right there. Click that box, go watch that review. Click in the box, get you the big old virtual fist pump. Also, best beginner planner I've found, right there.